what does that do to me when I love my greatest nemesis? Talk about self-worth. Could you ever convince yourself that you're more worthy of love than if you have the true capacity to love the unlovable? Who can do that? Except for someone who's really got this. Now, what is true forgiveness? Okay, so according to A Course in Miracles, this whole world is an illusion of separation. We're very creative because we are just like one and the same with our own true self, our divinity, the divine creator, the great creator. And we're just the offspring of the great creator who are having a temper tantrum in which we said, we want to have our own world. We want to create our own world now. So to do that, when we were one with the divine, we decided to have this little episode that we thought, oh, no harm done. We'll just separate ourselves from the divine because how could you be anything but completely complete and in bliss if you're at one with the divine? So in order to dream this life of separation from that, we had to come up with a way to separate ourselves. And the ego or the idea of separation from the divine is that. So everything we see that is a duality of this and that, me and you, the books on the shelf, the things that are in your life that feel separate from you are actually a dream of separation. This is where the mind bending comes in. So I'm just giving you the alert here. If you were to go to sleep tonight, and have a dream, and you had a nightmare in your dream, you like were flying and then all of a sudden you fell off a cliff. First of all, who can fly? And second of all, where'd the cliff come from? And I wake up and I'm in my bed, I'm not at a cliff. And it's easy to wake up from a nightmare and say, oh, that was a crazy nightmare. But there are layers of this dream where we convince ourselves we're such good creators, we're such massively capable creators, that we have convinced ourselves that this is reality, this because I can touch it, I can feel it, I can sense it with my five senses, this is reality, and it's very, very um, material, so it's not easy to morph and change time and space, bound by time and space. It's got all these things that are principles about it that I have to, that are laws that I have to live by. And I, I can't get out of this except for one way. And that way is terrifying. You die. So who would dream this up? Who would create this kind of scenario unless it was a big, bad God? Who would let this happen? And we don't realize that, no, that's not the divine. The divine is letting us do whatever we want to do, knowing that we're perfectly safe, that we're always at home, that we can never be left comfortless. But we can dream a nightmare, just like you go to bed tonight and dream a nightmare, but you're going to wake up. And the ultimate reason why forgiveness is so powerful is because it is such a mind bender. It's everything we don't want to do. And if we do it willingly, all of a sudden we start to see, oh, whoa, this isn't what I thought it was before. They're not what I thought they were before. Actually, the one who was my biggest nemesis now becomes my greatest savior. I, who would have guessed? And what does that do to me when I love my greatest nemesis? Talk about self-worth. Could you ever convince yourself that you're more worthy of love than if you have the true capacity to love the unlovable? Who can do that? 
except for someone who's really got this. What if I chose just for a little moment, a split second, to love something that I've deemed unlovable my whole life. And now I say, I don't know what this is. For the first time I admit, I, I really don't know what this is because if it's painful, then that's not the truth. That's not the perception of the divine. Well, the divine doesn't have perception. It sits in allness. It's absolute. It is absolute love. There's no opposite to that. So when we separate ourselves and we come to this earth and we live in this place and we choose to dream these crazy wild dreams of separation that everyone's dreaming. So you gotta, you gotta love the creativity going on here or the the capacity to make mayhem and drama. Some people have not yet been able to harness their creative capacity to the degree that they would really love. So they're making drama everywhere, spewing drama everywhere. Listen to this with a with a non-judgmental heart because this is about self-forgiveness. But think of your own self at times when you were feeling really separate from yourself or unworthy or dropped or any version of separation. Dropped, lonely, sad, guilty. Anything that you could see that was a small version of yourself, an unworthy version of yourself you know that there was chaos ensuing around your life because we're highly creative. You're gonna make drama or you're gonna create beauty at best. And there's all kinds of differences in between those two, but at best, when we awaken, we create beautifully, elegantly, eloquently. And we realize, oh, I did it that way because maybe, Maybe I was trying really, really, really hard to do it really good, but then I dropped myself at the end. I didn't believe in myself. My self-worth tanked the moment that it really mattered. And then I thought it was them that got me angry because just at the moment when I was supposed to show up even more connected and more powerful and more creative, I let the nightmare take control. 